Wonderful. Okay. Everest, do you want to record yourself? Do you want to redo your introduction so that we have it? Uh, it's okay. It's okay. So I'm joining with two accounts. That's why. So. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, so welcome, everyone. I'm just going to speak for a couple of minutes. Uh, Yebabel will also say something. And yeah, I don't think there's a huge amount of content. Uh, most. Most of the work that we have to do is going to happen. Um, most of the work is going to be done by you, the trainees. But a warm welcome to everyone who's made it this far. Um, this is the sixth batch of training that we have. And we are looking forward to working with each and every person here. Um, because actually, it's really it's fascinating for us. Very selfishly, it's fascinating for us to see how people work, the amount of work that people put in, um, the new approaches that people take. and. I mean, personally speaking, it's just wonderful to see the transition that people go through from, uh, I guess, everyone made a decision when they applied to uh, all of the application materials to the prerequisite test to being here today and what will happen over the next three and a half months. And just a few minutes before this, we started the supported job search phase for uh, the fifth batch of training. And so it's exciting for us to see um, the sort of speed increasing. And the best part is always when, uh, of course, when people go through the training, they get their first job and see the results that they make, not only in their first job, but as they grow in their careers. I was just seeing someone from our first batch on LinkedIn and the progress that, um, that he or she is making. So not I don't have a whole lot to say. I think your work will speak a lot more. Um, I just wanted to encourage everyone who's here um, to just to, a little bit of an onboarding just to say, what are we looking for and how to be successful? Um, our What we're looking for and what we've seen in terms of people who are successful is very, very simple. The one thing that we're really designing for are that people don't give up. Um, and so that's the biggest struggle that we face is that people decide themselves that this is too hard for them or they say they're not fit to do this. And so everything that we've designed and the systems that we've designed and the support that you will have and the materials that are available um, have been designed so that almost anyone, you need to have a certain, because it will move quickly, so a certain background in programming. Um, that being said, one of our most successful, our top-ranked graduates from our third batch came in with an English degree, didn't have a programming background from university. But what we're really looking for is that people are present, they're consistent, um, they make use of all of the opportunities, um, but really that you don't give up. And so for every, anyone who thinks that I'm going to be successful, but I'm going to get it done in five hours, it's going to be difficult. If people take time off because they're tired, it's going to be difficult. Um, but most of all, if people decide that they're just not going to make it or they're not going to put in their full effort, that's the single greatest distinguishing factor that we've seen. So I think that's the first point I want to make. You're here, you've come this far. We have at least 50 spots open. Um, and if you've made it this far, it means that it's likely that you can be one of them. Um, we are looking for people from all over the continent. And we know that it's difficult if you're working by yourself. And so we encourage you to make use of the platforms that are available through Slack, through the standups, and um, to make sure that you get the support that you need from the tutors, from the community, um, and don't try and finish don't try and do everything yourself so that, um, of course, uh, you don't give up. Um, the other, so that's, I think, in terms of work ethic, that's an important point. The other, I'd say, success criteria that we're really seeing are people who are curious. And so if there's something that you don't understand, a lot of the work that we're going to be doing with you over the next three and a half months is trying to develop this, um, this muscle which says, if I don't understand something or I don't know why something works, that people ask the question, um, why is it like that? Or if you're in a tutorial, if you're on Slack, to ask the sort of curiosity questions, the why questions. Or if you don't understand something, or if you think that the person who's leading the tutorial maybe has missed something, to put your hand up and to say, actually, I don't understand that. Can you help me explain that? And I think the third muscle that we're really trying to develop is that people work with each other. Um, in the world of work, I don't. I think the majority of people don't have a lot of work experience here. In the world of work, it's not like school. We're not looking for people to compete with each other. It doesn't necessarily matter who's best, 
whether uh, somebody got a 97% or a 96%, it doesn't mean that that person is 1% better. Actually, as a team, we win together. As a cohort, we'll win together. And so that's the third muscle that we're looking to develop. So that's that's about all I have. I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Arun Sharma. I'm one of the co-founders of 10 Academy, um, originally from Canada, but I've been working in the sector for a couple of years now. Um, and really happy to be working with my partner on 10 Academy, among other things, Yababel, uh, who, who I'm going to hand over to. And um, yeah, I'll leave it to him to finish. Hi, <clears throat> thanks, Arun. Um, and definitely, you know, it's just uh, what Arun said and what's also equaled not giving up is really the main thing um, that you can do just, you know, very good to yourself if you know exactly what it means and also exercise it um, in practice. And I'm Yababal, I think as Arun introduced me, I'm also the co-founder, Arun and I um, made a long time ago, uh, something probably now eight years or seven years ago. And since then, I think we have been working a number of, you know, things, but in particular, uh, Ten Academy has been the main thing that is, um, I would say, what brought us very close together and the most element that repeatedly over the years we uh, come, you know, we kind of whenever we talk and what are we doing, why are we doing this, it always becomes impact uh, over everything else. And we know what that means because I think, you know, Arun has been working in the African area um, for more than since 2003, in, which basically is really more than me even uh, in that sense. And I have been uh, also in different African countries teaching um, or giving kind of some uh, lectures. And I think one of the things that we noticed in common is that talent is abundant. It's not really a shortage of talent, but it always boils down how that talent progresses. So it's basically most people don't have the, basically the uh, roadmap how they would convert that talent, that talent that we both and Arun lived in Canada, studied in Canada and has been living in now in Berlin, has seen many other uh, worlds. And I have also, I studied my PhD in Italy um, and also in Africa. And then I have done my postdocs in different places. And we have seen what talent is, you know, how some of the talents in Africa compare with, for example, say in the US or in Canada or in, in Europe or anywhere else. And then I think the one thing that I think we both agreed that the first fundamental principle we had is talent is not a shortage. Actually, talent is really abundant. But how that talent is matured to a world of work is really a different thing. Universities don't do just this. In, in principle, let's say just universities, let's call them, I think, in our agreement, universities maybe are not tasked for that. Universities are probably tasked to give you a background knowledge something that you know slow knowledge with sometimes uh, i would call it but then the world of work is different because the world of work doesn't it is not static like knowledge you know knowledge you know the principle an axiom in mathematics from you know just aristotle's time is still the same you know you just know it you know it you know uh, just in geometry you you your parents has has been the same process has been taught of that, you are taught of that, anybody will be taught of that, like, you know, in the future as well to come, maybe even in the next 500 years. But the, the skills that are required in the job are quite fast. You know, last, I would remember just before 2020, a lot more was data science. We started even as a data science to train data science. And then we realized, ah, most of the algorithms in machine learning and AI has been already kind of there and has matured. All that was required now, what the industry was moving, was not to do like Google and Facebook and others to try to get new algorithms, but more to deploy these well-tested algorithms into actually um, work. And that required a completely different set of skills. And that skill is called machine learning engineering, data engineering, web three engineering, IoT engineering. And that is means just basically just same as when we build buildings, you know, and, and bridges, you know, we don't need to know how concretes are mixed so that whatever concretes, the science of that has been done, the engineering of it probably has been done, but somebody who knows the pieces and how the project, you know, completes on time um, without failure, without, you know, with all the things being done is the most important skill. And that's why skill really changed. That's the set of kind of 
uh, skills that are required has changed. And now the skill is not only just even technical skill, it's a lot more dependent on other skills, communication skill. I would, you know, if you underrate, if you think like all you need to know is just how to program, how to, you know, train a machine learning model, that's not going to get you even a job, not even the first interview, let's say. Or if you have an interview, you might not even pass to the, uh, to the job. And, you know, the communication and other teamwork and the staffs are becoming so important because, as you know, engineering, it means you do really want something role and others do something and then you communicate with them. The business, the CEOs want, you know, a clear understanding of what's going on and then they make decisions. And so a lot of these skills are interrelated and the set of skills that are required to be successful in job are changing. And that's why, you know, trainings like Ten Academy is really um, geared towards that and suited for that. Short, intense, um, and then you would learn a lot more of it, the skill, you, know, you have got some of the knowledge from the university and all you need is some kind of polishing of that and being prepared and changing the mindset. So ultimately what I want to then just come is that, you know, in Ten Academy, more than knowledge, what you really would change in short amount of time is the mindset. If you come here in the morning, not deciding to really participate and that for this training to be your game changer, it's hard. It's good. You're going to struggle. You really are going to struggle. You have to decide 100%. This is just like, you know, when you change a country, you will not just lightly do it because you will need a place to stay. You will need this and that. You just have to really make that decision, that departure from your, you know, the usual set because it's going to be very intense. And that intensity will be probably for most, probably 90, almost 100% that I have talked to in the past trainees, they have never seen it, like the intensity. You can call it just going to a military, but in this case, instead of, you know, to fight with whatever, it is to really get a, a new self of you that would be a lot more of preparing for a global job. It's really probably more intense than maybe even a military training, because this one really requires, a, you know, a much more set of, you know, some kind of discipline ability to change, ability to learn fast, but you will do it. As I said, we don't really think talent is an issue. You are talented. You have your ear here. It is not a much more of a talent issue, but it's a mindset issue. The mindset, you, this will, this change and this kind of gearing towards to the best person of you. Of course, we only just take you a little bit far in that journey and you will continue it and you'll be the, you know, you will achieve, you know, what you can do and what we will just show you probably in the next three months is that the test of it things that you have never told you will do you probably will do things that at the moment if i ask you what is you know smart contract and how long will it take you to learn it a blockchain you might think okay maybe a semester and then but we would say it's a week and and you probably will not believe us but then you will see it you know, in one week you will do something that's just you will not only be proud, but you will deploy it almost in real life. And that's the kind of like, you know, what you would see. And the best teacher you, you will be in, in, in Ten Academy will be yourself, but yourself, the successful part of yourself. That means you will see yourself, will try, will strive to bring you to that success so that you can learn from your own success, from your own achievements. And that's, in, in my opinion, is the best teacher you will have, the successful uh, version of yourself. And in 12 weeks, we try to drive you over over uh, on that. And in this first week, though, of course, as always, just there are you know, resource constraints. You have to prove and demonstrate that. And I think, you know, I will just end by exactly the same thing that what Aaron said. The best thing you can do to yourself is just come decided 100% to really give the best. And in that one week that you will have, you will, even if you don't make it, you will really, really just thank yourself that you have done it because you will learn what can be done in one week, right? It's a very compressed time. But if you make it, it's also that you will really be doing that for another 12 weeks so that you will just be prepared for, um, and then it will get easier. At first, the first few weeks will be much harder, but you it will get easier. It's just basically, actually, almost everyone at the end, what they would say is that, so like it's going from a cold shower, you know, a hot shower to a cold shower, like some people described it. It's just, it's like, you get used to it, 
it's warm at first it might be just a change but then it's then the usual the the, the part that you have been now since just you know since yesterday uh, from the ones that are in the past becomes actually the new foreign it's just like you don't even get used to it for a while after you finish so we believe that you really will make it and you know it's a, the likelihood is high it's the numbers are in you know it's good just come prepared try your best and whether you are in after one week or not you will really enjoy it the the, the ride you will learn a lot and some of um, the people here came from actually the previous batch they probably were not prepared um in the first week so they they really now are just um, you know they have prepared themselves and and, and they joined so it's really good and i, I want to say again you know welcome and it's going to be really a really nice one week uh, we will have and a very interesting right and thank you and i was a little bit long but let me hand over to who's leading arun you are I, mute if you're talking i think that's all we have i don't know if we have any questions so we didn't fill up the hour um but yeah, if there's any questions, we have uh, time for a couple of questions, and then our next session, as per the schedule, starts in at 10 a.m. UTC. So I don't know if there's any questions. You can have any questions that you want to ask. You should ask it now. I think we have some time. So Gideon and then, yeah. sure, yeah, Gideon and then Margaret. Hello, my name is Gideon. Uh, thank you for explaining, that was really wonderful. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, in the Ten Academy website, it says there are different streams, uh, web-free programming, smart contracts, and so on, and machine learning, engineering, and data science. I was wondering, uh, will everyone pick a specific stream or where we'll be participating in in all of the streams all at the same time thank you yeah very well do you want to take that one yeah uh sure yeah so everyone will do all of that except of course at, at just at the end the first the last two weeks we will you know people would be able to work more on one but the reason behind that is that a lot of them are overlapping and the tools that you would use for machine learning engineering, data engineering um, is is similar. And then in Web3, any of the deployment processes that you would also work in the first days will be similar. Of course, that one slightly would focus much more on non-Python programming, but you can still also Web3 can use Web Python programming. So a lot more focus will be on the Python programming while you are in um, Web3, uh, sorry, in, in machine learning engineering and data engineering. In the Web3 sense, it's up to you how comfortable you are, whether it's JavaScript or Go or REST or, you know, mostly just we would be focusing on, on JavaScript and um, uh, Python. But you will be, everyone will do three of this, you know, all of the projects in the three of them. So it's, it's every week there will be one project, everyone will be participating. So I, I hope that answers your question, Gideon. So, you will be able to do even if it's not the stream and also the choice of the stream will will happen only in the eighth week of the training before that everyone just basically does um, all the projects okay thank you margaret um hi everyone my name is margaret from kenya um i had a question about this week's challenge um I was wondering if it's possible to get the challenge document for this week um, earlier before the tutorial, uh, so we can just go through it before the tutorial. Sure, I think it's gonna be shared uh, very soon in the next half an hour. So I think it's going to be shared in the next. Uh, so I think we purposely didn't want to share it too early so that uh, we share it just before the tutorial and walk into it. Um, yeah, so fair point, but I think we're going to be sharing it in the next half hour just before the uh, introduction or the welcome session. But going forward after that, uh, from week two onwards, we'll be sharing it the night before the opening tutorial. 
there was a question, uh, the full roadmap. So uh, Yasa Benet asks, can we have the full roadmap of the 12 weeks and the objective and the outcome of the training? Um, so the roadmap, I think it'll be, uh, we will be adjusting as we go, um, partly by design and partly by necessity. The design part is that we want to, we're always in discussion with different players from industry, different companies, different individuals. And if we find a really interesting challenge um, that somebody from industry is facing and they're able to package for us, we'll, we're going to use it. And so the full roadmap, uh, we can give you an idea of what we'll be covering. Um, what I can tell you is what we covered in batch five, and I think we'll be ready in the next few weeks to give an overview of batch six. Uh, but we covered, and you have correct me if I'm wrong, six ML engineering challenges, uh, four data engineering. So six weeks on ML engineering, four weeks on data engineering, and two on Web3. And I think we're going to be adding a little bit more Web3 this time. Two, yeah. And for the objective and the outcome, uh, very, very straightforward. We want every person who finishes to be uh, ready for a global level job by the end of the training, um, and that people actually match into work. So yes, Abana, I don't know if that answers your question, but very straightforward. So we know that um, there's just a little bit of polishing that needs to be done, and there's a difference between understanding something and being able to demonstrate something. And I think it's that difference that most it prevents a lot of people from being able to access the jobs that they need to be able to access. So even if you know how to program, um, that's usually not sufficient to be able to apply for a machine learning engineering job anywhere in the world. So the ob our, our objective is to select high potential people to provide them uh, with the training that they need to match into a global level job and then to help people actually get those jobs. So our for us, we're not measuring our success by the number of certificates that we provide. Um, we're measuring our success by the um, the success that each of the trainees goes on to have as part as an employee, and so that necessitates that everyone here, or as many people as possible, actually get placed into work. So that's the objective that we're looking for. Uh, Nahom, just, sorry, yeah, go just, ahead. Just maybe to add on, on that, uh, just so that it makes it really, really clear that. You know, some people might just be trainings, they consider it for knowledge, but expect that knowledge is not even measured as much as job readiness. Um, and that means job readiness means a number of things that we learn enterprise culture, you know, that, that we really emphasize. So sometimes people would confuse what knowledge, I mean, knowledge is important, you know, as you know, so no one would say our oh, knowledge is not important, but your optimization would be different if you are optimizing for knowledge versus if you are optimizing for job readiness. And we absolutely are optimizing for job readiness. So that means you might not really at all understand some things and we don't that much care. Uh, so just making it the objective. So it's really, if we then have to measure again, now everybody gets a job and then we, we, we have another second derivative, what we would measure would be how fast they get job. And then the third derivative probably would measure would be then, you know, how fast then they transition will help them in their job to be senior. So it's much more going to be a lot more stack of metrics measured along the line of, you know, how good suitable you are for a global level job, just so that it's clearer. Thanks. Um, thanks, Yavo. Uh, for the question from um, Meseret, so much more important than a good camera. A good camera is nice to have, but good audio is really important. And so uh, I don't know how, I'm sure it's accessible buying a simple microphone. It doesn't have to be expensive, but something where you can hear clearly. It's very difficult to listen to people if they have feedback background, there's clicking, there's funny noises. So go and invest the $5, $10, whatever it costs in your country um, in a good microphone. Um, camera is nice to have but microphone is even more important. Uh, sessions will be recorded. And uh, over to Andernet. So Andernet, you have your, I'm probably not saying your name correctly, but Andernet, Alex, you have your hand up.
Okay, whenever you can speak, just unmute and go ahead. Uh, Mohammed Mohsen asks, can you tell us who are usually the employers that hire the graduates from that program and where are they located in the percentage of remote available jobs to the on-campus jobs? So I think this brings up a good question. We are not uh, the gatekeeper to jobs. So we will help you and we will facilitate jobs where possible, but our job is to prepare you to be able to get a job anywhere that you want. So that means a lot of people do look for jobs in their country of origin. A lot of people do look for jobs uh, based anywhere in the world. It is quite a fluid situation right now. The economy, as everyone knows, is uh, fluid. Uh, things are changing. So uh, I think the majority of people, I would say significantly more than 50%, end up working for companies that are, well, I'd say probably more than 50% end up working for companies that are based outside their country of origin uh, or where they live. I would add to that that even within those jobs, there's different types of companies. And I think we're looking for international standard companies. So we're not looking for people to take a job at um, a company where they're just doing the mindset is such or the speed is such or the expected outputs are such that um, it's not international standard. So I think almost everyone ends up getting a job at a company with a serious manager, with serious tasks, compensation is good. Um, but we're looking, our measure is much more in terms of growth potential and uh, output as well as salary. So, Mohammed, I don't know if that answers your question. <clears throat> so this is uh, just, so we have, let's, let's take two more minutes to wait for any questions, but this is a great example of um, the type of situation that you will be faced with over this week and for those of you who make it onwards over the next 12 weeks where there's an opportunity but there's no clear guidance on what it is that you need to do so we've made ourselves available to answer questions you have a lot of people who are here um, and i heard on another talk that if there are a few questions it means that either everything is very clear or nothing is clear and so hopefully it means that things are quite clear what's coming up is uh, clear but um, you will, you have to get used to this idea that you're going to be, if no one asks questions, then it'll be silent. Um, and it's, it could be a wasted opportunity. So Maurice asks, is there any possibility to get internship after the training is completed? Um, so Maurice, our goal is actually that people get jobs after the training is completed. Um, so if some people do that via an internship, but it need not be via an internship. And we do have a full-time team. Um, Miriam, who you'll be in touch with regularly, Miriam Musa, who's on the call today, she's leading the careers team. Um, her and her team, there's two tutors who are here, um, two careers tutors who are here, along with four technical tutors. So all of us are working together to make sure that you have the skills that you need to get jobs um, and so an internship's a possibility but just to reiterate our goal here is not to give you a certificate our goal is to uh, that everyone gets into work as soon as possible and it is difficult it'll take a lot of effort it will take some time but our placement rates are pretty good uh josias uh josias asked what happened to the previous batches where are they now so the majority are working uh, majority are working remotely uh, we have people working on every continent on the world except for Antarctica. Um, we have lots of people working in different fields of AI. Uh, we switched to data science and AI from batch three. Um, we have, a, I would say, a good alumni network. We're working on uh, making that stronger. Uh, some of our most successful people, they were not only successful in their specific job, but they ended up, we have companies who came back and went from one 10 Academy graduate in some places to now 12, and they're interviewing some more. So. Yeah, I think there's there's a lot of different stories to tell there. I think we've published some stories on our website as well. Uh, Chi Joke, yes, you will get a successful, people who finish will get a certificate, um, maybe even a NFT certificate. Let's see if we can manage that. But there will be a certificate uh, issued at the end of the training. Um, Tadiba has a question. And again, I'm sorry for the names. I'm probably saying most of them not perfectly. Uh, Tadiwa Machakere, Kaire. Tadiwa, do you want to unmute and go ahead? No. 
No? Okay. Uh, Maybe just let me add about certificates just so that, again, I know that by now it should be clear, but certificates, knowledge, whatever are good, definitely you will get, you know, it's a given, but they are absolutely not what we are optimizing. I think the success of the training, it depends on you getting a job. So, and you getting a job, a paid job, a decent job, with basically that you will grow uh, from with an environment, not even just only that pace, but that actually a job that you will um, transform yourself to be basically senior, faster, and earn more, but also have the knowledge and the skills that are, that will really impact your career. So it's really career optimization, much more than uh, knowledge and certificate optimization, just to make it very, very clear. Go on, Tadiwa. Sorry about that. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. All right. Yes. So I have a question, rather more like clarification, request for clarification. Um, this week, what's the plan this week? Are we still in an assessment type of phase? Uh, will everyone make it to week one? Are we invited to each week as we go? How does it work? So great question. This is an assessment week. Um, so the assessment is as follows. So we have a staged assessment process. There was the application. There was the prerequisite uh, test of prerequisite skills. Um, we invited a little bit less than 150 people into this week. And we're aiming to go forward with slightly more than 50 people. So not everyone will be invited to week one. Um, the decisions on who is invited to week one will be made on the basis of uh, performance during week zero, both in terms of the assignments that are submitted, as well as the contributions to the community. And there'll be a smaller number of people who will then, who will proceed. So not everyone will proceed. Uh, in our experience, the majority of people who don't proceed is very simply because they stop showing up. Um, so we'll make those invitations to interviews, everyone will be interviewed, and then people will be invited into week one. Um, Week one to four is almost a get to know you phase for you to get to know us, for us to get to know you. And our expectation is that after week four, we want everyone from week five onwards to stay with the program. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Fisesha asks, hi, Fisesha. Um, everyone asks, he asks, how many spots are there in the program? How many will be accepted to the training? So we're looking for about 50 people. We can't give you a specific number because people's situations also change. But in the 50, our goal is 50. And then we recognize we'll probably be plus minus um, something. So Burhanu's question, hello, Arun Yevabal, I want to know about the daily activities and how strict the deadlines will be. Everest, could you speak to that? Yes, Arun. What was the question? Uh, Burhanu is asking about daily activities and uh, how strict the deadlines will be. <clears throat> yeah, thanks, Arun. I will start by the, the deadline. Deadlines are very strict and you have to follow the schedule. So for the activities, there is a notion of schedule that we have already shared with you via email. I guess also you have that on Slack. You have to check. So it's, it's very essential for you to go through the schedule. It's organized by daily. You look at the, the dates on top, but look at the activities and that will also be giving you reminders on Slack. It's because we feel like, you're, of course, you're not well, uh, well equipped with the, the notion and how to follow the schedule. But our team will do our best to make sure that you know what's coming up in probably in 10 minutes to come or 15 minutes to come. But feel free to get familiarized with the, the schedule that we have already shared with you. And so just to add to what Every said, thanks, Every for that. Um, it's much better to hand in on time than to wait to do it perfectly. And that's trying to be similar to what we're looking for in the world of work. By and large, if your manager asks you to provide something or you're waiting for something from your team, you can't, if everyone is always just deciding that I'm going to hand in half an hour late, one hour late, if you show up to meetings late, it's not. It's just not possible. So you need to, uh, timing shall be respected. Um, that's what we're looking to, to develop. And that's the sort of mindset and the culture shift 
that um, we were talking about is interesting. So we had some presentations last week back from batch, back from batch five, and one of the first things that Yevabel mentioned that he found the most impressive is that out of uh, thirty six presenters, I think thirty five were exactly on time. And that's one of these easy measures to say, you know, are people taking it seriously? Because it's not hard to be on time, but it's it's just a mindset that okay, if my meeting, if I'm presenting at ten. I'm logging in at 9.55, getting my camera set up, my mic set up, my slides are ready. It's just a mindset. It's not difficult, but for, for whatever reason, it's often not done. So timing is really important, and yeah, it's, it's just really important. Is being online a must? Mm -hmm. Everys, go ahead. Yeah, just to add on, uh, just make sure that you're not refacing with issues like connecting to the core. We'll be using the same Gmeet link, a Google Meet link, even though it's on every activities that requires to join the Google Meet, it's the same link. So there is no need probably uh, be like you, you're not seeing the link, even though we'll be sharing that. But every session will be um, launched like 10 minutes before. That's why we advise everyone to join five minutes before any session. For that, for that, you'll be very secure and you don't face any technical issues like rushing to the, you know, the joining time. Thanks. Tewodros is asking, is being online always a must -art? There may be an internet connection or problem cut. So we understand the reality. Um, no, it's not necessary to be online. Um, we do want every single person to attend at least some sessions and most important are the daily stand-ups. The tutorials are often very useful. This is so to be very clear, it's not, we recognize not everyone has a perfect power setup and a perfect internet connection. We would like you to make an effort to attend and to speak at every single morning stand up, very important. Um, and then if you miss other sessions because your power is not available, then you should be uh, writing on Slack and being available as possible. Uh, we will be recording and posting all the sessions on YouTube. Um, uh, Nahom Habto Mikhail says the 50 who are accepted are guaranteed to finish the whole training. No. Um, so, I mean, just to flip the question back to Nahom, if somebody stops showing up or they're not, we don't feel that they're job ready, how can they finish the training? So, we're providing an opportunity, but if somebody doesn't, is for whatever reason, isn't able to put to meet the expectations uh, that we have, and our expectation is that you're job ready at the junior level then of course that person isn't finished. Um, what we can say is that it's, we want that person to finish and our selection process, <clears throat> we trust in it uh, because we've developed it over a number of years and we've learned and adapted. Um, I mean, we also believe that everyone who's here today um, has what it takes to stick with uh, the training. But uh, unfortunately, we realize that not everyone is able to make the sort of commitment that we're expecting. Uh, Egide, the day, how long is a daily stand-up? It's typically 30 minutes long. Uh, and sometimes, as Fisetia says, it goes on for one hour. Uh, it depends, but 30 minutes is sort of the core the core time. Uh, Andanet, you have a question? Please uh, go ahead. Okay, hello. I'm Andanet from Ethiopia. My question is, are all the, group, are all the projects are in group or individual? And how the how are the groups are structured? The majority of projects are done independently. Uh, we have probably three to four, maybe four to five weeks of group projects that are put together, um, which are so we have technical projects and careers or non-technical projects, and so we have uh, different group projects that are happening throughout the whole phase. Um, those we will be assigning uh, you to groups for the majority. There may be one or two weeks, depending where we'll ask you to set up your own groups. Um, there was a question about, are the daily assignments related from Josias? Um, yes, especially yeah, for week zero, the daily assignments build on each other. So very, very important that you get day one sorted. We heard, we've heard it regularly that uh, I wish I had figured this out in day one, because actually now I need to use it in day two and day three. So they do build on each other. Um, so I stand corrected. But, but just, just, yeah. but just to add even, not only that they are related, I think as I don't say, they are dependent, and even if you continue um, 
in the 12 weeks, there will be some dependencies. That means just you, you are asked to actually reuse the knowledge that or the techniques you learned in another project as well. So in a way that most of it just, you know, if you, if you think of it, a work environment, a lot of it is just again and again similar. Um, so in a way, yes, but the week zero absolutely is one project that you will do every day different things that you are required to submit every day some things, but the actual, there is only one project you are supposed to do in that week, in this week, basically, in that week zero. Thanks, everyone. Um, Mi Michele? Michele? Yes. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, hi. Actually, I have uh, one question. Uh, I want to know if it is possible, actually. Uh, I, not, I need uh, to know how the selection process goes to someone to be data engineer, uh, machine learning engineer, or web three uh, engineer. I need uh, to know the requirements or the criteria if it is possible, actually, to know. Sure, I, th I think that's a, so we'll get into, we'll talk a lot about this as we go, but what we will do is lay out uh, what industry is looking for. So it's less from our side and it's more from your interest plus what industry is looking for. So a good example is for machine learning engineering, industry does wants uh, software engineers with machine learning experience. And so by and large, that's, uh, that's beyond our control. And it's also not possible to learn what we're teaching plus software engineering to the expected standard. Um, so if you know software engineering, then you have that option. If you're not a software engineering expert or you're not comfortable with that, then your choices are more limited. So we will present you with guidance. Uh, we will provide a framework within which you should decide. And then we will provide a timeline for you to be deciding within. So uh, that's it. It's, we're not going to be forcing anyone to do make any decision. We won't be forcing you one way or the other. But if we don't agree with the decision that you're making, then we'll keep asking you until we understand your decision. Uh, Eku Baz, you. Eku, uh, you're welcome. Eku Bugs, Bug, Bazgi, sorry, asks, um, is there any assessment methods apart from the daily activities? So activities, your what you hand in will be graded. Um, we're also looking at attendance. So attendance is important. Are people showing up? Um, we're also looking at contributions. And we're also looking at who's being helpful and who's being nice to other people. Um, so we're looking at what do you submit, both technical and non-technical. We're looking at your attendance and we're looking at your community participation. And they are weighted differently. Um, but, and we're also looking at your participation in stand-ups and tutorials. We're looking, actually, our prediction is who's going to be successful in the long term. And if you're getting your work done, if you're being helpful to other people, if you're being curious and asking questions, if you're present, um, those are all things that we think are good predictors of future success. But Yevabel, do you want to add something on assessment? I think it's very similar. I mean, we definitely collect a lot of data just so that we give you feedback, right? So you know, what, what our role is to really learn and understand. We know what the industry is looking for. And we always, while we, we are training you, before training you, after training you, we would be having conversation what industry is wanting. And we will just, that will be our guideline, right? So everything that we will try to do, as Aaron said, there are some of them are proxies, indicators, some of them are hard or soft skills, but all, you know, kind of point in the same way, which is like, will you be getting a job, a global level job in this case, just um, as easily as possible? Would you make the interview? Would you really do perform good in the interview? Would you, because you are also the carrier for our brand, would you go in that company and would you basically represent us so that the company actually will be like, okay, let's get more of these graduates right just the same as um anyone else so we definitely because that really depends on that every of the assessments we we try to give you that guidance that feedback 
and that means exactly what Arun mentioned, a number of them, and whatever else data that you are giving us. Um, in this case, you know, from the non, they are non-technical as technical, just really on how you think of your career, how you think of, you know, uh, work environment, mindset, all of those would be measured. Again, there are daily submissions, but submissions on non-technical things that you would be asked to, you know, to think something, to evaluate somebody else, to, you know, you will be paired, and then all those data we would try to collect, mostly to actually provide uh, feedback to you where where you are in that track. Because you just have to know one thing, that when you come in, it's free because we think we are giving you that loan, um, that basically you would, we would take that loan, and any company would fail if they just give the loan for anyone just without any when, without any predicting that the, the loan would appreciate or that basically the loan would be returned. Otherwise, we would stop really doing this. So then that amount, you will go and you'll pay it in the paid forward, uh, which means when you get a job, right? So that if you are unable to do that, if, the, if we really do bad, that means if we don't do that and most people don't go to job, that means there's not an academy. So it's really a suicidal mission if we don't accurately give you feedback so that you are on track to get a job. So it's on our side, we work sometimes more than what you do, trying to understand where you are, whether you are going to be, you know, um, getting a job and kind of our loan is appreciated. So you can actually think of it, whatever question you have, you can think of it that way. We want you to be successful. Our performance, our continuation depends on making you job ready. So I think this, that, that, that may give you a certain idea. Sasha? Yeah, uh, thank you very much. I hope you can hear me. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I just want to take a minute to uh, thank you guys. Thank everybody behind this uh, wonderful program. And I hope everybody takes this seriously. Uh, that's just so I just want to thank you guys. Thank you. No, thank you. And thanks, everyone, for being here and making the effort. We know that it's um, we're definitely not perfect in terms of the systems that we have yet. We're working on making a, giving a little bit more notice and <clears throat> getting all the materials that are together. Um, before we wrap up the call, we'll be introducing some of the key people that you'll be interacting with. But um, no, thank you for that. Um, I think there was Prince. Prince Akonde has his hand up. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Um, th thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my question comes. Uh, my questions come in two folds. The first one is: uh, How soon will the videos be? Rec uh, the recorded videos be uploaded to the YouTube after um, each session, and then the second one is with the uh, metrics. Uh, what are the weights for each metric? You said um, with the metric for selection is going to be weighted. If you can give us an idea of how the weight is going to play out. Yes, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Sure. So our goal is three hours to upload. Um, if there's ever a question, you can reach out to, um, so you can reach out to Everest to ask the question. He'll point you to the right person um, for who's doing the uploading. Um, but if there's, for any sort of organizational, operational matters, Everest is your first point, or he's coordinating that whole area of work, and there's other people who are supporting him, or there's other members of that team. Uh, our goal is three hours. Um, we often make that in some cases as we have a new team and we're getting set up. It may be a little bit longer at the start, but um, it's a great opportunity to ask on Slack what happened, are there any, did anything, if you have a specific question, it's a great time to ask. Um, in terms of the waiting, I can say that the majority is we're looking at the work that you actually do. And within that, are we looking at the output? Are we looking at the clean cleanliness of your code? Are we looking at the documentation? Are we looking at how much effort did you put in? I would say that majority of it is not how well does my code work and did I find a good uh, reference online? It's did you really put the time into thinking about it and writing um, a good piece of output? Um, so that's the majority of it. Community contribution is important. It's uh, a significant proportion. So we're looking for people who are present and active and helping people. And when someone has a question that they're not waiting more than five minutes, people are jumping in to provide an answer. 
people are on the stand-ups, people are on the tutorials, and they're present and active and being nice and being helpful. Um, so I think that's about the detail that we're ready to share at this point. Unless you have, well, you have something to add in terms of the metrics. I mean, I think you know the in the good the document that we will share, which is the you know what defines the basically the whole guideline of the week. You will have the, the specific numbers, how they are measured. So the different weights are be will be will be you will be able to see it. Just now, I mean, I think probably by now, is it shared or will it be shared just right now? So you will have a, a Google Doc that basically outlines the different, you know, the the summary. So that document is the key document that you would use for the whole week because it lists everything that you would like to know uh, related to submissions, related to how your work is going to be evaluated, related to what specific tasks you are doing every day, related to the different tutorials every day, everything that is related to the training, uh, technical training, as well as the evaluations is in that document. So you will see it. I don't think it's been shared yet, but I think it'll be shared very I soon. Think it's, you know, you miss, uh, you, Say it, it's shared already. So is it shared? Okay. Uh, probably, yeah. But it will be shared for in the next. If it's not, you will have it in the next five minutes. So, so Mohammed asks, what's the average expected so, time? So, so, sorry, every go ahead. I was saying week zero is shared. It's shared. Okay. Um. So Mohammed asks. Sorry to interrupt. I want to emphasize on something very small thing, but a very important one. <laughs> So as as you have you will be attending sessions or Slack, so we want you to use the same email that you used when applying. So when you join the Google Meet, please use the same email. Don't join with another email. That's very essential for us to track uh, who is joining. And because if you join with another email, we'll not be aware of who is that person. But if you join with the same email you used to apply, we'll be aware of who you are. So. As you understand from Aaron, we'll be tracking every, everything, your community contribution, your attendance to the tutorials, to the stand-up sessions and everything. Then we'll be tracking by, of course, recognizing your emails. Please take that into consideration and respect that. Thanks, everybody. It's very, very important. So we're running out of time. Uh, just going to answer the questions briefly, and then we'll move into the next session. Mohammed says, uh, what's the average expected time? So we're looking, we're expecting this to be your full-time uh, your full-time job, and we're expecting it to be a very busy full-time job. So the work that you will get, especially in week zero, is more than you're likely to be able to finish. And so uh, 60 hours per week. And yeah, I think we're looking, you should be ready for 10, to, uh, 10 plus hours per day, at least for this week, and probably for the next three months. And the reason is we have a lot of content to cover. Um, Temeskan asks, can you send us the technical thing in details that make us win? I think we've covered that over the last uh, 58 minutes. So uh, it's more about the mindset and the approach of hard work, curiosity, being helpful, and working with other people. Um, so then we have a question from Johannes. Hello, thank you for your nice uh, explanation. I am Johannes from Ethiopia. My question is, uh, what material and uh, tools needed to uh, come up with in this zero uh, program, the week program? Uh, or is there any uh, resource in addition to this, how we can get a resource from previous uh, batch? If it is, thank you. I, I mean, I can take that one. So, in every week, so whenever uh, we share a challenge, it is shared usually in a folder, and in that folder you will have the tutorial. So that means some, and then the challenge document itself contains actually a very rich um, reference to different things that you might need. And then more than that, also the Slack will have a lot more other references. So I, I would say my recommendation to you is that start from what is shared, like in the challenge document, uh, because those usually would be shared after checking um, and really making sure that they will help you towards that. 
So the, there is, and then the, the tutorials are already usually in the folder as well. So you will have the more references, more resources in that as well. So it's, you're gonna have, but again, a lot of more depends on self, self-learning. So that means you, you will still have to uh, search and learn yourself a lot more, you know, watch videos, whatever you, you, that's the method of learning is very not fixed here, you know, because it depends on everyone and it's just like work, you know, nobody was, it's, it's just clearly stated. And of course people help you just like other colleagues in the work, they will help you. Um, but the, actually the method of learning that makes you better and get, you know, make you understand short, you know, and very quickly depends on you and your choice. But we would share enough references that would that would make you start. So, just two one last two last points that I want to emphasize. One is just to highlight who's who. Um, so your key resource people, you have uh, Anastasia, who's uh, the lead tutor. And so, if you have any questions around the technical side or the assignments, uh, Anastasia is your first point of contact. Everest is coordinating the entire cohort if you have any questions about timing resources what should i be doing uh, assignments hand in deadlines he's your first point of contact and Miriam is coordinating the career side of our work so if you have any questions on the career side Miriam's the right people the right person um and the last point that i wanted to make is just a uh, shout out to all of the women who are applying um so our goal is to have a perfect 50 50 uh 50 50 balance and so we will be having different sessions that will be coordinated by Anastasia and others on the team. But um, what we've seen is that often this, this idea of I am ready for it sometimes takes a little bit longer. That for many of our previous uh, women alumni, they needed a little bit more evidence before they believed that they were ready. And so we do have a number of spots that we're holding open. Um, we will be uh, having a lot of other support sessions, including women only. Uh, Slack groups and chat groups and video calls, but um, we do want to reach as close to 50-50 as possible. And so for anyone who wonders, am I the right person for this opportunity? And I'm hearing the words, I have a 13-year-old daughter and she often asks me, am I really, am I able to do this? And so I just wanted to emphasize with a resounding yes. Um, honestly speaking, many of our women become our most successful alumni. So if you're asking yourself the question, am I ready to do this? Then absolutely resoundingly, yes, um, completely you're ready to do this. So I think that's all we have. We can stop the recording and then move straight into the next session. Thanks everyone.